This video is an introduction to a chapter that is called the th thermodynamics of non-electrolyte solutions. Okay, the work that we have been doing until now uh, in thermodynamics uh, has dealt with pure substances. Okay, especially last chapter when we looked at physical equilibrium, the type of systems that we were interested in uh, were pure substances in which we were just studying phase stability. For example, think about water and then ice, liquid water uh, and solid water. And the questions that we were asking is, well, uh, what is the stability of the system? When can you have a phase transition and so forth? Now we move forward uh, by trying to understand mixtures. Okay, so situations in which you're not going to have just one component, pure substances, but more than one. Okay, so uh, the idea here is that uh, ideally, we'd like to look at uh, uh, mixtures in the liquid phase that will also be a step forward in, an, in our understanding of thermodynamics in which you not only have one substance, but maybe two, okay, A plus B. And uh, uh, this chapter, uh, the questions that we're going to be asking is, well, what makes this uh, mixer stable? How does the presence of maybe B affect the boiling point and the freezing point of A? What happens to the vapor pressures of those liquids and so forth when they are mixed? Okay. Uh, the reason that we're actually studying this is, uh, is because it's important in various uh, aspects. Uh, but uh, also paves the way towards one of the concepts that is uh, fundamental in thermodynamics, which is the chemical equilibrium. And that will be next chapter. And in the chemical equilibrium, we're just not uh, asking the question about whether A and B, the mixture is stable, when A and B are not reacting with each other. But then uh, when you have a chemical equilibrium, the idea is that, well, A might be a reagent and B might be a product. So these two can interconvert uh, with each other. And it turns out that to understand that chemical reactivity, uh, it's very important to understand uh, the thermodynamic, thermodynamics when you mix two liquids uh, uh, to start with. Okay. In addition, uh, we will learn a, a variety of other things of um, uh, mixtures of uh, substances. And one of them, for example, will be how uh, when you have a gas on top of a liquid mixture, okay, what controls the solution of that gas into the liquid phase? Okay, that will be also part of this chapter. All right. Um, the, uh, let's talk a little bit about the language that we're going to be using right here. Uh, in, in most of our uh, cases, we're only going to be looking at uh, mixtures of two components. Uh, those mixtures are called binary mixtures, meaning that again, they only have two components, even though really the formalism uh, uh, can extrapolate directly to three components, four components, or more. Okay? Uh, when you only have two components, uh, the components receive uh, very clear names. The one that is in majority, we call the solvent, and the one that is in minority, we call the solute. Uh, uh, this terminology you, you're familiar with from other courses, uh, but I, th I think that perhaps the way that you have used it until now would be uh, when you were preparing solutions of, say, a powder B being dissolved uh, in, a, in a solvent A, then this was a solvent and the powder that you were dissolving right here, that's the solute. Okay, and that's fine, that, that does apply, but it also applies when you're actually mi mi mixing two liquids. For example, if you mix water and ethanol, uh, even though ethanol is not a powder, you're not making a, a solution out of, out of weighing some grams and, and dissolving it into the, into the water. There are two liquids. Uh, again, the, which one is the solvent and the solute is just simply determined by uh, which one is majority and which one is minority. Okay, so the majority component will be the solvent, the minority component will be the solute. Okay. Um, uh, the last thing that I'm going to introduce here is the fact that all of the studies in this chapter are going to be with something that we call non-electrolytes. The definition of a non-electrolyte is very simple. To us, a non-electrolyte is going to mean uh, that it's a substance that does not form any ions in solution. Okay, so for example, uh, we will be looking at uh, a solution of glucose in water, or maybe ethanol in water, or glucose in ethanol, or benzene and toluene. Okay, so all those, those pieces, when you uh, mix them uh, uh, in a solution, no ions are formed, and that's what we call non-electrolytes. The reason that we're f uh, focusing on non-electrolytes is that solutions where you have ions, which will be uh, electrolyte solutions, those are much more difficult to explain, and we're going to uh, reserve those until the end of the semester. Okay, so non-electrolyte solutions are, uh, the thermodynamics are far simpler, and that's what we concentrate on this chapter.